Hello beauties, welcome back. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jess. Today, oh, I've got new content. That's right, new content alert, new content alert. Whoop, whoop, whoop. As my birthday is coming up, I decided to give you guys some more content. What is it you asked? Well, I'm going to be taking a dive into the one and only Reddit. Yep, that's right. I'm going to be seeing if revenge is really a dish best served cold. So, how I'm rating this, you'll ask? Well, I'm going to be the judge of these and see if they're really revenge worthy. And I'm going to be creating either a royal yes or a royal mess. So let's see what we have in store today. Trying to steal my legally rented parking spot. Enjoy being unemployed. Ooh, that sounds good. Let's see what we have. This happened last night. I am now in a good enough spot to actually post this. I'm not quite sure if it qualifies as a pro, but it is definitely, but it is, but it definitely isn't petty. So this looks like it was from a pro revenge site, uh, like on the Reddit page. Again, I've only just created one, so I'm not really too sure about it. But we're gonna we're gonna read it. See if see if I dealt them worthy of the revenge trophy. Let's see. <clears throat> I am a professional driver. As such, on the road in the US, there are different different truck spots throughout the country that have that has a pay to park system. Usually about 10 to 20 percent of the lots marked off as reserved, with each space running from 15 to 25 pounds. The truck stop excuse me, the truck stops where this took place has a parking of $17, which is relevantly cheap. For a guaranteed spot. The spots are reserved for 24 hours starting at 4 p.m. local time and exceeding to 3 p.m. the following afternoon. I know that I would have a late night delivery so I came to the truck stop around 3.30 and paid for a reserved spot. I told the manager on duty that I had a deliver I had a delivery up the road that night and would be back once delivery was complete but should still be able to clear out of the spot by the next afternoon, brackets today. She told me that this was okay and she would mark the spot as sold. When I left, when I left that way, if someone else came in trying to reserve that spot, she could consult her notes and deny the sale. I've got it. So essentially trying to sort the spot out and okay, nothing, nothn't too bad yet. So 11.15 p.m. rolls around. I take off from my delivery. I don't get out of the facility until 2.30 a.m the next morning brackets this morning so i groggy groggily groggily yeah so i groggily drive back to the truck stop to reclaim my pay for my spot only to find that the reserve parking spaces are all full i called the manager on duty and after giving her my information informed her that all the spots are full and that someone has parked in my spot and hasn't paid for it oh there's karen's jennifer's and bloody rebecca's in the world I'm sorry to whoever our names those. <laughs> um, she sent her other employee out to start checking trucks. The culprit was from a company that is known for their bright orange trailers, and he was a company driver. The other employee started banging on his door to inform him that he is parked illegally and he has to move. Meanwhile, I can see the combination from commotion from my mirror with my vantage point in the fuse island where I had been instructed to temporarily park. The driver answered the door with a bottle of Henningsen in one hand and some sort of smoke impl imp implement in another. I don't know what it was, but for the sake of the mods, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I decided to roll down the window to hear the commotion and I heard the employer tell the driver to even move or he will get towed. He will get the towing company and police involved. The driver is flat out irritated that someone has the audacity to tell him where he can park and cannot park. He slams the door on the employee and <clears throat> threatening him. Employee calls the police and tow company and the police show up first. Oh, it's already going down. Like, who is this guy to turn around and yell at this employee? Like, he is the one illegally parked. Like, dude, chill. I don't know what you're... But, chill. <laughs> I had worked for this company before, oh okay, so I know their policies and more importantly what they can and cannot have in their trucks. Alcohol beverages, alcoholic beverages are not allowed in the cab. Anything that isn't cigarette, that isn't a cigarette or cigar and a lighter also not allowed. The couple, so I'm just getting a drink guys. 
where was I? The Coupe de Grace and Pew Pew of and okay, so essentially no no guns or any sort of like other violent stuff um, are absolutely not allowed and especially not allowed loaded. This driver had all of that, oh my god, and some of the other not so legal substances in his cab. So he was hauled away in, in cuffs. His truck was hauled away on a wrecker. I made a call after the commotion died down to the company's safe, safety director and informed that he... Sorry guys, that, this is a long one, I need a drink. And informed them that their rig will be impound in, a, in an impound lot and the driver is going to jail over the not-so-legal stuff he had in his truck. She thanked me and said that he was definitely losing his job, especially over the alcohol and the other not-so-legal stuff. I guess he well-played screwing around and finding out card. I mean, and to be honest, a... you didn't do anything wrong, and I like that revenge. I mean, I, I don't really, I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, for me, fair enough, you worked at that company before, so you know the process. Do I think this is a big sort of pet? I don't even think this is petty, to be honest, or anything along that line. So I think it's just strictly you doing what's right. It's going to be a royal mess. Sorry, Redditor. Don't How know. I got my boss's job and my co-worker at 15% rise. Okay. Okay, another long one. How... Uh, okay. Hi, Redditor. I can finally share my story because now it's all over. I am on mobile. And also, English isn't my mother language. And this is my purse rose on... Okay, so just be nice. The backstory. I'm not sure how this is going to be revenge, but I'm going to hold my hold my judgment. To the backstory. This all happened in a EU country. I don't say which one, sorry. I did my apprenticeship in a mid to big size factory as a fat machine operator. After I completed my apprenticeship, I worked in, in the... Production for around one month. Then I got a call into the office and they asked if I could do some holiday replacement So I said yes, why not? Better hours and clean work. I got teached the system Which is pretty easy because I manufactured these parts for one year After my co-worker came back from their vacation They asked me to stay and become a part of their team. So I said yes sounds good So I was now working in sales slash quality department now to the present time Seven years later, our team increased from five workers to 15 because of reconstruction, which helped us a lot. My boss retired last fall, and after Christmas, we got a new young boss around my age, 27, who was a major asshole and sexist. Ooh, I hate people like that. Ooh. We've got a few weeks behind him, and sorry, we've got a few weeks before him, and a new hire, a lovely girl. Okay, so they hired another person, age 19, which I trained her. It, If you are new, you are doing some errors, which is totally fine in my opinion. So I came... Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, God, sorry. So I came in last Friday to hear my new boss screaming like a maniac at the young girl. Oh, uh, why? Like, he's 27, she's 19. Like, give her a break. If she's training, she's training. Uh, where were we? Yes, the screaming manic at this young girl. I asked what happened and she said she filled the wrong forms, which happens even to me. My boss noticed it and screamed at her. I rephrased it. Boss, you stupid little... Who... who, How dumb can you be to fill out the wrong form? I should fire you and make sure that you never find another job in this field again. Co-worker starts crying at this point. Then my boss storms into his office and slams the door shut. What a dick. Like, automatically, a dick. I want to see if, you know, this, this revenge. I asked my co-worker if she's okay, and she was still sobbing, so I brought her a coffee and took her out. Our office grandma, everyone loves her so much. Oh, okay. So you essentially just, you know, made her feel better when she had a sexist boss. Got it, got it, got it. I was at this point pretty pissed and told everyone what happened. After they learned what he did to our new co-worker, Free stormed into his office and quit after 25 years in his company. My boss said to them that they are worthless and overpaid. They told us that. And a plan was formed. Everyone will quickly quiet quit. Oh, everyone will quit except for me for now. What my boss didn't know yet is we had a huge customer audit happening in three weeks, which I am only certified to prep for. If we fail this, it would cost us 15 to 20 million euros and the customers would pull their contract. <gasps> Oh, I'm already intrigued. So, after my boss learned that the whole department quit except me, he was even more pissed. 
boss. Hey, why the hell did everyone quit? Me. Maybe because you're an asshole and a sexist pig. Boss, what did you just say? What did you just say, you asshole? Me. You know what I said, and do you remember that big order in three weeks by customers? Yes. What about it? Me. You know that I am the only certified to prepare it, right? Yes, and me. I quit as well because I do not want to work for such an arsehole boss, see ya, and walked right out to my other co-workers to say goodbye in the whole factory. The <clears throat> the product VP noticed it and asked what happened, so I told him and he was pissed. He called the CEO, which I knew pretty well, and said, Robert, the shit's hit the fan big, down, big time. Come down to the production floor now. The CEO asked if it's important, and VP said, if you want to pass the audit in three weeks, then move your ass down here now. So the CEO comes running down with the audit, C enter Sisu, and asks, what's so important? Then I piped up and said, our whole department quit today and won't come back until this motherfucker of boss gets removed and fired. Then they asked what happened, and I told them. They were mad and asked, how can this be fixed? I said, fire him and hire a better fit. Because I held more quality, uh, most trainings and qualifications, they asked me, which I gladly said yes. So we took, t uh, oh my god, just, oh my god, that's the best ever. I'm not even finished, but not only did you get him fired, you took his position. And that whole plan of everyone quitting, that was amazing. So we took off to my new office with my old department and the CEO in tow. My boss saw me and said arrogantly, arrogantly decided to come back and beg for your job back, you worth, you little R-word. Or me. Nah, just to inspect my new office, because you are fired now. <gasps> oh, because he didn't even know. So as you walked up, he was like, you coming to ask me the job? And you're just like, nah, I'm just inspecting my new office because you're fired. He laughed and said that I'm under him and only the CEO can fire him. So the CEO came round the little corner and said to my boss, get the f out of my company, you are fired and I'm making sure that every company knows what you did. My ex-boss was white as a sheet. After that, the CEO called the police and reported him trespassing. In the end, I got a 70k rise and a bonus option, which I declined and asked if we could split it. Oh, that's nice, for my co-workers, and I didn't need that much money. Brackets, 1 million euros worth of bonuses. My CEO agreed, and everyone got their jobs back, and we completed the audit without any fails. The customers were happy, and so were we. Oh my god, uh, I don't even, like, I don't even, <laughs> yeah, 70k plus whatever is normal at this point. Wow, what a story. Your former boss sounds like a nightmare. Oh my god, absolutely hands down. We are going to give you the one and only a royal yes. Congrats. I love that one. Yes, that is the best revenge that I think. I mean, so great for your boss for actually taking notes straight away and getting rid of him. But also congrats to your co-workers for all of you coming together and just, you know, Putting him in his place, letting him know that, hey, you may be a guy, but if you're a sexist pig and you're rude, then that's what you get. Yes, 100%. Love that one. Okay, let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got now. I'm interested now. We're getting the ball rolling. Former manager made my life hell and I finally got her fired. Oh, okay. I was desperate to join... Oh, sorry, let me just put this on big screen so I can see it better. I was desperate to join a new company after my husband and I were both laid off last year. When I was offered a new role, I knew it would be a step down from what I was doing, but my manager and the team seemed great. And the part has not changed. However, since my manager, Gary, was so busy, he basically offloaded me to another manager, Jane. Okay. I was supposed to be the connection point between my team and Jane, but it quickly became Jane micromanaging me. Oh, I hate when people micromanage. Just let me do my thing. Like... You, you tell me what I need to do, but let me do it. Like, let me do what I need to do. Let me do my job. Otherwise, you do it. <sighs> she would ask me to work through lunch, move slash cancel vacation days, call at 11pm on the weekend and order me around on phone calls. She also made nasty comments about my weight and said I was big for my race. Oh, I hate her already. <sighs> the list of personal slight, slight so long that it felt Three pages i would talk back to her and she did not like that and that promoted her more i only stayed because we needed to pay the bills finally i had a mental breakdown on friday afternoon after she yelled at me for something trivial and scheduled a meeting without including someone from her team who i 
and including someone from her team who I didn't know about. I was dealing with a family tragedy and couldn't take it anymore. I told Gary about the situation with Jane and he was sympathetic and not at all surprised considering half her team quit. He immediately offered to move me to a different team under him. I was thrilled. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, you know, moving team and that sucks that you were going through something so bad and you have someone on top of you being that way. That absolutely sucks. But glad you, you know, you got out of it the best that you could. So, la la la. Well, it turns out the new team didn't help. Oh. So she went to a new team and that didn't really help the situation. Jane continued to order me around around from afar when i ignored her email she came to my desk one day and started loudly talking about how i am not qualified for this role gary overheard and finally told her off but the verbal abuse didn't stop after two months there i abruptly wrote my resignation letter and stapled the list of jane's offensive comments and cc'd everyone oh gary offered a bunch of accommodations to try and keep me but seeing how she was still perv provoking from afar i said the only way for me to stay would be best for her to go and he didn't have authority to let her go her manager was in a different country and despite several hr complaints from at least five people nothing was done so i left loud and without shame telling everyone exactly why i was leaving yeah as you should good tell them make them know times were very bad for three months there were nights when we ate slices of bread just so that we could pay the mortgage and emergency expenses for a health crisis and a funeral even after he found a job so i'm assuming she means her husband we were still catching up on bills and still are i spent months applying to five ten roles per day sometimes over 20. last month i saw a public memo about a big shot from a former company joining the company i just left i used the job oh i used to work with this guy closely and text him congrats let me know if you need any insight on your new place we had a quick call and I told him the ins and outs where I thought they could in a vote. After the call, he asked me to join the team as chief of staff. I accepted. Imagine Jane's shock when we had our first all-hands call. All the VIPs and above were asked to welcome the new Big Shot in a giant conference room. In Big Shot's speech, he br breezes over that I... I'll be his chief of staff, along with a few names. I now sat two levels above Jane, and apparently within the three months I was not there, the other half of her team turned over. Every single person left. Gary was excited for me and said all nice things. However, Jane took the careless route and sent Big Shot an email about how I am an underqualified idiot that I used to work for her, how I tried to get her fired, and that she suspected I lied to get ahead. She didn't even try to fake being nice. Big Shot forwarded me her email and asked what this is all about. Oh, it's gonna go down! It's gonna go down! Shit, okay. I was so nervous and excited. Little did Jane know, I was a director at Big Shot's competing company and was already a level above her. So two levels isn't a big gap, and I worked with him for five years. I had an hour's call with Big Shot and told him she was bad for the company, culture, and was a nasty person in general. But the evidence he needed what? But the evidence he needed was Gary confirming that her whole team has turned over my prior resignation letter, which was still sitting on my desktop when I logged in upon arrival, or sorry, upon returning, and a few other nasty emails she sent her recent stuff, which they were happy to share with us. Big Shot fired Jane on Friday oh my god um, she was probably so pissed like i'm not even kidding she was probably like the audacity how dare they like she was probably freaking losing it the fact that you were able to not only get a fire but you became above her like yes absolutely a royal yes yes 100 percent royal yes is all over like amazing oh, i couldn't have done it any better to be honest moving on oh okay we love a bit of breakup this was a time when I was working as a barman in a student spa. Oh, okay, so it's a male. Okay, fair enough. Very friendly and nice place where everybody loved to hang out mostly on Wednesdays and Fridays and have a time to make up group homeworks together and chill on other calm days. <clears throat> One of those calm days were when there was not much work, but most of the storytelling with barmen. 
I joined with three cute girls that came that day and they were telling that they had decided to drink today and hang out because one of their girls has caught her boyfriend cheating and had a stormy breakup. And two of the girls were telling stories of their breakups because of the same situation. Now, breakup revenge begins. Okay. One of the girls started telling uh, telling about her revenge. Let's call her Birdie. Birdie realised that her boyfriend was cheating and hatched a plan of revenge while acting like she knew nothing about the whole cheating situation, even though there was a lot of evidence. Her plan was to ruin boyfriend's car that he was loving and that he was loving and caring, but her own words even more than caring and loving loved Birdie. So one day she filled syringes with eggs and injected them into her boyfriend's car seat. Then she broke up with him and he never s with him and have never seen him after. She told us <clears throat> sorry, it's like I'm trying to do a lot once. She told us that at the time of the breakup it was winter and you can imagine how it was smelling inside of the car when summer came with scorching heat and six months of rotting eggs with no clue where it came from. That's how Birdie lays eggs to cheating boyfriends, okay? Then, we were all calming down and having yuck moments and laughing. Another girl, let's call her Spiky, gathered up her memory due to key memory car and started another revenge story about her own cheating boyfriend. She was a student and had a part-time job as an assistant of insurance agency. She was living in an apartment that was inherited from her grandma and her boyfriend. And Spikey's boyfriend was from another town, so they decided to live together in order in order to him avoid renting and using rent money for his parent for better student life, such as drinks and party. On one of those parties, she caught him cheating with some girl and ran her and ran home crying after cruel arguments. From her words, she didn't know how, but on, sorry, the spelling, like, I, I am dyslexic, so I'm struggling a little bit here because the spelling isn't really on par. Apologies. Nothing wrong with you, I just, yeah. Uh, so what are the, where are we? From her words, she didn't know, she was filled with, yeah, okay, here we go. From her words, she didn't know how, but on the way home, filled with tears and anger, Spikey had remembered that she was the one who insured boyfriend's car on her job and remembered all conditions and contracts with his insurance company. That was a tricky part. I don't know why. But in case there was a damage to the tyre, only three conditions were ca was a case with insurance refunded tyre damage. Conditions were that one, two and all four of the tyres were damaged, but not three. So plans were intimate. She also told that her boyfriend also knew that because they were making fun of stupid conditions, she had a screwdriver and punctured through the car's tired and put a camera on the window brackets third road to look onto the existing place where the car was parked packed all his stuff and put it in the front door and locked all the locks um that day boyfriend came took his belongings and went to sleep in the car and next day saw that three of his tires were flat he immediately knew what had happened and who did it but because of lack of evidence or some hangover thought he desired to puncture his last tire and file a report on the insurance company that's the part where the cameras on the car played in a role and she showed everything to the insurance company. Spikey was proud of this and she told that crap happened and now it turns out that the third girl to act some pettiness never cheats, slash a car to tie, etc. Wow. Okay, this one is a interesting one. So I think on this scale, that there's two on here, okay? So one is about Birdie. So she essentially put eggs. I, I mean... I don't know how people can think of this, but she literally put eggs in his car and then there were obviously six months worth of rot. That must have been annoying as fuck trying to find out where the smell comes from, but also trying to get rid of it. So I'm going to say that it is a, I'm really stuck, a royal, okay, we'll go a royal yes, just because I think that there was two in there and also they were something, you know, interesting. I think the one that stole my heart was definitely the, the insurance one, because it definitely looked like he did it himself. So that was a clever one. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a royal yes. Mm, a sibling versus middle sibling revenge. Oh, okay. We love a bit of family, you know, a little bit of family drama. My middle brother and I are less than a year apart in age, and we fought every damn day growing up. It made our parents so proud. I mean, yes, there's natural siblings fight, so I'm the youngest and the only girl. 
he was a pretty big jerk face who went out of his way to make me miserable. Ugh. I hate when siblings do that, like they know it pisses you off so they just do it even more. Um, but I found a way to get back at him. Here is one of my favourite methods. Oh, okay. My parents had a pretty sophisticated stereo system in an alcove between the kitchen and the dining room. My brother would sit at the dining room table doing homework and listen to music. The system could be controlled by a touch or a remote. When I felt particularly petty, I'd arms crawl along the table, <laughs> sliver into the kitchen and retrieve the stereo remote and then hide it in the living room. Was he really enjoying a song? Oops, I skipped to <laughs> the next one. He would get up and check the stereo, fiddle around with things and then go back to his homework. Five minutes later, I'd turn the volume down by half. He would get up to fix it with a lot of swearing. Three minutes later, I'd turn the volume up by half. He'd fix it. <laughs> then the whole thing might just turn off completely. This went on for months. He was convinced something was wrong with the stereo, but he was just one of... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, he was convinced there was something wrong with the stereo, but he was the only one who had ever had any trouble with it. We are both nearly 40 now and we are best friends, but I still think of this pretty revenge and, and it brings me so much joy. <laughs> oh my god, if you did that, that must have been so annoying. He must have been, like, losing his shit. Like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Are you okay? I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. What? No. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that they're siblings, it's still good. You've got to admit, it's funny. Yeah, I rate it too. I think this is a, a, a royal yes. Sorry, got distracted by a little DJ over here. Shush, you know. No, shut up, it's fine. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> the petty customer is always right for revenge. I heard this today. I admit that it sounds a protocol and embellished to me, but whatever, it's a laugh. I had a relative, brickets, my cousin's kid at university, who worked in a bubble tea calf <clears throat> in his free time. Let me call him Joe, okay? Joe's manager, who I call Mike, is generally an okay guy, but he has a bit oh, so he can be a bit hot headed. When things are good, he's nice. But when he's stressed, he'll get shitty with people. Joe's serving, on a, Joe's serving on a particular day. I'm struggling to speak today, guys. And one of his mates come in for a drink. The guy is indecisive and takes his merry time. A little cue, two or three colleagues slash anniversary age people start to form behind him. So Joe says to him to let the next person in line get so. But because as he's talking to a friend, he turned on phase is casual. His tone, do you mean like the, t the way that he speaks, his tone of phrase is casual? Okay. Mike overhears Joe and runs out of his office to have it go, really shouting, really shouting at Joe for taking an unprofessional tone with a customer and says it's okay for the customer to take their time because the customer is always right. But Mike is way over the top and really demanding to Joe. Joe wasn't rude and Mike was. Yeah, I, I must admit, I mean... He, he literally was just, you know, move out the way, let me serve another customer, and when you're ready, come back. That seems standard fair fair. Uh, shocked Pikachu face on the customer, okay? <laughs> then the customer in question, Joe's friend said, Yeah, Joe, the customer is always right. You shouldn't have to ask me to let someone else in. I, I'd have done it anyway, dot, dot, dot. And your boss is a dick for shouting at you. The other people in the queue look at Joe, his customer friend, and possibly each other grinning, and added comments like, Yeah, that's a real dick move by the boss, and the customer is always right. Your boss is being an ass, the customer is always right. Well, you can trust the age group to blow everything out of proportion. At that point, Red Cheek Mike felt quite a bit of humiliation, apologised to Joe for overreacting, and sulked back to his office. Apparently, a bit later, Mike was waged, wagging his finger at Joe, but couldn't and didn't actually re-permit re him further, like he had nothing further to say. Okay, so I mean, yeah, I hate that saying, the customer is always right. It's like, I understand that you want business, and that's why you say it, but no, the customer isn't always right. There are times when we don't have what a customer wants or needs, and we do have to tell them, and they don't like it. Like, yeah, okay, 
I get what you want, but I don't have that. So what do you expect me to do? Like, there's only so much someone can do. So I think in this instance, it was funny of the the friends to kind of get involved. Be like, yeah, the customer's right. And again, given the age range, that makes so much sense. So yes, I'm going to give this a royal yes. Because I think that one is, that is really good. I like that. Okay, okay let's see what today, guys. This is a short video, but I just want to make sure that, you know, we're trying stuff out, getting getting some new stuff, and hopefully you guys like it, and I'll do some more interesting ones. So let me know in the comments down below what ones you want to see next, whether it's petty officers, siblings, weddings, um, anything like that. Anything and anything, let me know, guys, and I'll gladly check it out. And, yeah, let's explore this journey together. Bye, guys. Bye.